Yeah, welcome to this week's vlog. So this week I am gonna go through my bike setup for the Fred Witten Challenge. Now, this applies to any of you doing um, a really hilly or mountainous epic event. Um, the setup for me will be pretty much the same. But for those of you who aren't familiar, the Fred Witten Challenge is one of the toughest events in the UK. It's 112 miles and it takes in all the major passes of the Lake District, which as many of you will now know, is an area that I'm really passionate about. So yeah, let's go through the bike and I'll show you the key uh, choices that I've made with regards to like tires and equipment and everything on the bike. So yeah. So before we go any further, I'm going to announce the competition winner from last week's vlog, which was a chance to win a Gore Shake Dry Dracket, which is pretty awesome. Um, and the winner I have picked is Chewbacco173, the 173rd member of the Chewbacco clan. Congratulations. Now, Chewbacco173 asked, over the course of an average sort of sportive, uh, such as Ride London, how much faster do you think an average cyclist could get around if they were to ride an aero bike with aero kit versus a sort of endurance bike with endurance kit? And what change or item of equipment would contribute the largest gain? So this got me thinking, and this is also inspired why I'm talking about this setup today in this vlog, so hopefully I'm gonna be able to answer that. Now, to help answer that, I've enlisted the help of Xavier Disley, who is also known as the Aero Coach. Now, for those of you who don't know Xavier Disley, he works with a lot of top athletes and a lot of amateurs as well, and does aerodynamic consultancy and also kit consultancy, and he also does course modeling. Now, his efforts have actually helped Hayley Simmons and um, Hamish Bond win Commonwealth Games medals in uh, the time trials. Uh, the last Commonwealth Games just gone, so pretty awesome, and his methods clearly do work. So I asked Xavier to help me model the Fred Witten course and help me determine which was the best equipment to use. Now, the obvious thing is to use a really lightweight bike setup. And you know, there's lots of climbing in the event and there's lots of very steep climbs. So I would naturally gravitate to using the lightest helmet, the lightest jersey and the lightest bike. But is that the best setup? I wanted to find out, so I asked Xavier. Xavier, reckons that he's broken it down I've got the stats here Xavier reckons that on all the climbs I can make a gain and this is irrespective of my weight this is assuming that my weight remains the same let's go into a bit more detail if we're talking raw CDA numbers according to the course modeling I can save 0.004 on my CDA by using a more aero setup. That does make a huge amount of difference, particularly on descents and on the flats when I'm going a lot faster. It doesn't make much difference on the hills and Xavier says that the biggest improvement on the climbs is actually from using faster tyres with lower rolling resistance. Now this is because rolling resistance and gravity are the major forces slowing you down once you're below 20 kilometres an hour. So Xavier suggested that I use Vittoria Corsa Speed uh, tubeless tires. And I had these tires in a 25 millimeter width, which are brand new. So here, here's one here, mounted on here with the gray sidewalls. Now these tires are fast as <laughs> but They are so fast. I've uh, done rolling resistance testing of these tires with Watch Shop and they are by a mile the fastest tires. Independent testing says they're the fastest tires. I used them in Project 49. It's tangible, you can feel it. You ride these tires, they're way faster. And Xavier is actually saying that I can be around six to seven seconds quicker on Hard Knock Pass by using these tires. I thought, right, I better get on my bike, get it set up, go try them out. And I did just that. And I entered a road race just the weekend before Fred Witten and I had these tires on. They felt great. They felt amazing. Um, but 90 kilometers into the road race, I punctured and had a massive blowout on these tires. The sidewall completely went. There was tubeless sealant in there, but it was just too big a hole to ever seal. It, the tire completely lost all pressure within a split second and I was right on the rim of the wheel. So, 
I've also spoken to other people who've had similar issues. They are the fastest tyres out there, but they're just a little bit too fragile, I think. For a time trial, I'd, I'd use them, but for a longer event, like the Fred, I don't want to get a puncture, and I don't want the tyre to fail, so, you know, to be fair, Vittoria do call this a TT-specific tyre. They wouldn't recommend you use it for Fred Witten themselves, it's just it'd be nice to, because on a long event, you're going to gain so much from these being such low rolling resistance, but... So, I've decided to go with a different tyre. I have gone tubeless, and I've gone for DT Swiss ERC 1100 die cut wheels, which are excellent wheels, I've tested them lots. Um, they're bomb proof, they're really nice and aero, like they've got the features with the no spokes, just saving a bit of rotational drag inside the wheel. And they're, you know, they're tubeless as well, and this is a key thing, they're optimised for 28 millimetre tyres. So I want to run 28s because the roads in the lakes can be a little bit rough. And also, going back to how steep the climbs are, in the past I've sometimes struggled with traction. Like I've struggled to maintain traction on wet 25 and 30% gradients with the rear wheel spinning because you have to be out of the saddle. And they're so steep. Well, I do anyway. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're proper hard. But um, yeah, by running tubeless and 28, I can run lower pressure, I've got bigger contact patch, more grip, and the roads, and more comfort, because the roads are a bit rough in the lakes as well. We've gone for a 32 tooth cassette on the rear. And to do that, I've also put on a Shimano Ultegra long cage rear mech. Now, you can sort of bodge it and just use the standard Jura Ace mech now on the new Jura Ace, but Shimano doesn't recommend it. And to make it shift optimally, um, a long cage Ultegra mech is better. Now, the reason why I've gone for a, uh, the 32 cassette, the 1132, is because, I mean, if you're not familiar with Fred Witten, there's 30% climbs in there. It's brutal, and there's about 4,000 meters of elevation. So I wanna try and spin as much as I can. And I mean, even with a 32, I doubt I'll be spinning. But I've still got mid compacts up at the front uh, because I do wanna have speed on some of the descents and some of the descents are really fast. And if I just ran a compact, I'd be spinning out a little bit because I will be going over 70 kilometers an hour a few times, I imagine. And also I like to just have something more to push against than on a compact. Something to point out as well about the gearing I'm using is that many bikes uh, come with uh, 1132 cassettes now, particularly if it's an endurance or sort of sportive bike. But if yours doesn't come with an 1132 cassette and you want to fit one, then the best thing to do is to check um, that you've got a long cage rear mech because that, that's the sort of bit on the, the mech, on the rear derailleur needs to be a sort of longer one. That'll be able to tell. You can Google it and you can check if yours is long cage. And if you've got a long cage one, you should be able to fit a 32 cassette no problem. If you're unsure, just go check your local bike shop. But have you know? Don't worry about fitting a 32. If you're unsure, just pff, go for it. You know, even Chris Froome and, and and the likes will run 32 cassettes on the steepest stages in Grand Tours. So if they're doing it, pff, I'm doing it. No brainer. Another little cool detail is uh, this, which is an Apajura saddlebag. So this is a new saddlebag from Apajura, who make a lot of the big bike packing bags that you see on people's bikes. But this saddlebag, I've, I've picked this for two reasons. Firstly, it matches the bike. Like, it's kind of yellow and gray, which is really important, obviously. Um, but also, it's really light. It weighs about 50 grams, and it's one of the lightest saddlebags out there really, and it's great quality as well. So that's the reason why I've got that on there. In terms of pedals, we've got the Time Espresso 15 pedals on there, because uh, they're incredibly light. You may remember those being used on the hill climb bike. I get along with them. Um, I can set my cleats up really well with those, and they're just so light, you, you save a chunk of weight there. Up front on the cockpit, I've gone for a Syncros stem, aluminium stem, which is Scott's in-house components brand. And then I've got the Pro Vibe uh, Aero Bar. Now the reason for this is because um, the bike came with a Syncros Aero Bar, that's Scott's own bar, and it's carbon and it's really nice, and it's really aero. And I, I really like that bar, but the problem with it was it wouldn't come in my size. So I like to run a 40 centimeter handlebar because 
I've not got the widest shoulders and it helps me get a little bit more aerodynamic on the bike by running a slightly narrower bar and that's a little bit faster and I can, you know, it feels good. Um, but I also like to have a slightly longer stem and so I couldn't get the Syncross aero bar in the width I wanted with the stem length I wanted. So I've had to switch to a separate stem and bar. So if we go back to Chewbacca 173's original question, which was what is the single biggest gain you can make? Then the answer to that question is tires. Now that is the single biggest gain anyone can make, I would say. Optimize your tire setup. Now we just did a video on latex inner tubes. Latex inner tubes, I'm pushing that under the umbrella of tires. Massive rolling resistance gains to be made there, but there is the caveat. So if you wanna know more about latex inner tubes, watch that video because all the information's contained there but um yeah i mean tires are the biggest improvement because they improve you every all the time not just on the flats and on the fast sections but also on the climbs just by having better rolling tires mm. better rolling tires is going to be something that everyone can benefit from regardless of how fast you go so i'd say that and also in terms of bang for your buck it doesn't cost a huge amount to uh, invest in some better tires. Now, tires, what would I recommend? Well, look at the tires that your bike came with as standard. Unless it's a really expensive bike, um, odds on, it probably came with something that's quite a budget entry level tire. And by switching to something more expensive, that's a more of a premium tire, you can make a significant gain. So Xavier Disley from AeroCoach has mapped the course with me and done some modeling versus my old setup that I used last time I rode the event with this new setup, right? And this also includes other equipment as well. So the equipment I used the first time I did it two years ago was a Cannondale Super 6 Evo high mod um, rim brake bike with a round handlebar it weighed 6.8 kilograms total bike weight. I used power tap pedals. Um, I had NV 4.5 wheels, and I also wore a POC Octal helmet, which is a really lightweight helmet, but not especially aerodynamic. And I wore a Rafa aero jersey and didn't really wear any other aero kit apart from that. Now this time round, I'm going for a heavier setup but more aerodynamic. So we've got the Scott foil, we've got um, disc brakes, DT Swiss aero wheels, which are pretty similar to the Envy's really, so that's pretty much the same. We've got an aero handlebar. Other things are I'm wearing the Giro Vanquish helmet, and hopefully I'll try and wear some more aero clothing, maybe the Endura suit, but that'll be weather dependent. If it's raining, I'm gonna have to gab her up, you know? But based on this, based on my weight being the same as last time, uh, Xavier's done a load of calculations. Basically, he's mapped out each of the key climbs and looked at the savings that he reckons that I can make through being more aerodynamic and having lower rolling resistance in my tires through using a tubeless setup. And it's pretty significant. And crucially, overall, he estimates that I can save around 20 to 30 minutes using my new setup instead of my old setup. And that's if we consider that my weight stays constant, my weight stays the same as last time, but I'm actually a little bit lighter this time, about two kilograms lighter. So hopefully I'll be even faster, but we'll see. I can't wait to see if the maths and the science is accurate. Now, before we get onto competition time, I need to point out something. And that is that I was rescued this week and I'd mentioned earlier that I'd had uh, my blowout in the road race I was doing and this meant that I had to a long walk back to the HQ of this road race because because I was running disc brakes on Gwyneth there was no neutral service because all the neutral service wheels were normal wheels not disc wheels so I started walking a long way back and fortunately a good Samaritan came my way and helped me fix my wheel and get me going again so I could ride home and uh, that guy was uh, a, a very nice chap called uh, Jamie Turney from Twickenham Cycling Club. So thanks very much for that. And as a result, I've decided one good turn deserves another. So get in contact with the email address and uh, Jamie, and I'm gonna send you this, which is a uh, Lecole Gilet as a thank you for helping me out. Thanks a lot for that, I really appreciate it. So hopefully you enjoy that. And this week's competition is also a chance to win a Lecole Gilet as well. So, to be in with a chance to win, comment below with 
the hardest, most brutal ride or event you've ever done and why it was so hard. What, I want to know what made it so hard. And um, subscribe to the channel and then you're in a chance to win a gilet. That'd be good. But uh, until next week, I'll see you later. And yeah, have a good, uh, have a good week. No, and I can't, I can't do Sunday either because I'm doing the Fred Whittam. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Fabian. Maybe another time. All the best. Yeah. Ciao to you too. Yeah, ciao.